Okay, so there are a variety of tests that we can use in the laboratory to test for different types of carbohydrates. Uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is the iodine test. Okay, well this one actually is a test for starch, the polysaccharide starch. If you have a uh, starch molecule in solution, it's basically colorless. Um, starch kind of forms a, a sort of suspension or a colloid, so it can get uh, sort of cloudy. Um, but for all intents and purposes, we'll consider it colorless. When you mix it with iodine solution, which is usually yellow, it will form a complex, a starch iodine complex that is very deep blue in color. And this happens uh, fairly rapidly. So uh, that's one way to test if your solution or your um, food has starch in it. You can add iodine. If you see a deep uh, blue complex form, you know that starch was present. If the solution stays yellow, that means there's no starch present. All right, the next test we'll talk about is called the uh, Benedict's test. And this uh, is a test for what is called reducing sugars. And it turns out that if we just look at the sort of maybe the last uh, carbon on a Fisher projection, uh, if it's an aldehyde, that is known as a reducing sugar. And we call it that is because it will actually um, undergo a redox reaction with copper plus two in solution. Uh, when the uh, sugar reduces copper, it will form an insoluble copper one oxide. And then the sugar is oxidized to to a carboxylic acid. And the reason why we can t uh, use this as a indicator is that the copper plus two ion solutions are uh, sort of a aqua blue color. Whereas the insoluble copper oxide forms a very reddish, like a rust color almost, um, solution, if you will. So uh, this uh, test can uh, test for reducing sugars for uh, sugars with an aldehyde on the end. Um, it turns out that um, monosaccharides can often um, sort of switch between a ketose and an aldehyde, so that can still also detect the presence of those monosaccharides. Um, it's a good test to um, differentiate um, between solutions of disaccharides and polysaccharides um, after they've undergone hydrolysis to form monosaccharides. So you can test for the presence of monosaccharides after um, a breaking down of mono polysaccharides or disaccharides. The next test is a very similar one. Uh, it's called the Tollens test. And it can again uh, test for reducing sugars. So if you've got an aldehyde on the end of a monosaccharide or somehow uh, other aldehyde, uh, it will actually cause um, the production of silver. The aldehyde will react with uh, silver plus ions in solution and the Sugar will again be oxidized to carboxylic acid and produce silver solid. This would be an aqueous phase. Now that, of course, is very easy to um, distinguish from uh, a solution that wouldn't produce because you, what you see in your test tube is a very, uh, you know, basically a silver mirror uh, starting to coat the inside of the test tube. And so it's a very easy way to tell um, that the product is formed from a monosaccharide with an aldehyde. 
The last test uh, we'll talk about is basically a fermentation test. And this is um, essentially a test to see if the sugar can be metabolized by yeast. Okay. When a sugar breaks down, it's broken down by yeast through um, uh, its metabolism, uh, carbon dioxide bubbles are produced. And so that way you can tell if this sugar can be metabolized or not. If we see the presence of bubbles from carbon dioxide, one of the products in our metabolism uh, of the sugar by yeast. <clears throat>